It is a pleasure to be here. I work with a research group in Czech Republic, and we are working on the lights of the living cell. Today, in, our, in my presentation, I will show you our results in which we captured light from the living cells. And from now, we conclude that every cell, either it is a plant, either it is a microorganism, or any living being, all of us, emits some kind of photons. And these photons are just not useless. It has important functions to do. I will demonstrate in the results here. So uh, I came from India to work on this field. The inspiration for the study came from this person. In 1923, what he did, he found out that when two onion tip cells were kept together to each other, and it was separated optically, that means there was, no, uh, there was a barrier between the two onion tips, and there was no chemical transfer, no gases transfer, but there was an influence of one onion tip on the other tip. That means the growth of one was influenced by the growth of the other. So this was the start of the, um, this kind of hypothesis. At, this time, at that time, he didn't understand what exactly it is. He just named it mitogenic radiations. So, before I move further, I will just summarize what actually ultraweak photon emission is. Just assume a candle, a very small candle, at a distance of one kilometer from you. You didn't feel anything, you didn't see anything, because our eyes are not that sensitive to det detect this. So what, what actually is the intensity of the emission which we emit? It is just a few photons per second per square centimeter. Different people named it differently. During 80s, few people on the, worked on this topic. They named it biophotons. Some people worked, uh, named it as uh, ultraweak chemiluminescence, considering it to be from chemicals in the body. So the difficult thing here was the det detection, how to detect this. So what we did is, before we start the measurement, we need something, some chamber, which will be completely dark. We tried to construct this. What we did, we constructed three layers of dark chambers, and the final, the innermost one, was considered to, and we measured there, that there are no photons going inside. There is no source of photons inside that room. Now, the next thing was, actually, it looks something like this, if you look inside the room. So, after that was, the next step was to detect it. So we use the photoelectric effect. What happens in this effect is, if there are some photons, when you direct this to some photocathode, it ejects some electrons from this photocathode. And in course of time, with this uh, series of photocathode, it multiplies the electrons, and finally it is detectable. So we use this technique as the first one. And the second one was, we used, uh, we modified actually uh, some astronomical cameras. These are used to locate the distant stars. So what we did, we modified this camera and we used this for our purpose. The problem was this CCD camera, uh, charge couple device camera, is, uh, is uh, working at normal temperature when we use an astronomical purposes because the photons coming out from the stars are huge. But in our case, because it is very, very less, it was even not possible to detect with this one. The feature of this camera is it is able to accumulate the photons with respect to time and then create a two-dimensional image. Now, the thing was, it was having some noise level, which was more than the photons which are coming out from the body. So this was the problem. So we take into consideration, we reduce the temperature using some cooling system. We cool it to minus 110 so that there are no noise levels. So actually, this work continued for about eight months. And every evening, I was like this, going back to my home. I was spending almost eight hours every day in completely dark chamber trying to measure something, but with no results. So finally, after eight months, 
what we measured is this is the number of photons which are emitted per second uh, from our body, from any bo if this was measured from the human hand, from this surface of the hand. The thing was, uh, before I move further, I should uh, make this clear that these are not the photons. Actually, if you go outside, if I'm here, uh, my body has some pigments. In my, uh, so what happens? Uh, these pigments are able to trap some photons coming out from the source and release it in course of time. So we tried to avoid this. We kept the subject, the person on which we wanted to measure, completely one hour in the dark so that everything which was absorbed was released. And now we are going to trap the photons which are coming endogenously, the spontaneous one. And the upper one is the picture of the hand taken with a normal photograph. And the below two images are the bio images. We call it bio photon images or ultra weak photon emission images. So these are the real photons which are coming out of your body. This was measured from the hands, both the sides of the hand. And next was this. So this is the photons which each of us emits. This was measured for 30 minutes, and these are the number of, uh, these are the photons which are emitted in 30 minutes with an accumulation. So up to now was that each of us emits some photons. The next was to understand why, how, and how it can be useful for us. Now we tried to find out what actually is the source. We did a set of experiments to understand what actually it is. So the top two images, the first one is just a picture. The second one is the spontaneous one. So by spontaneous, I mean which is spontaneously generated without, without any excitation in, the no, in normal. And the below two images is we treated our hands with some kind of stress. We applied some very low concentration of some chemicals, which are doing some oxidation and reduction. So the image was enhanced in these two cases. So the conclusion from this was the emission comes from our biomolecules in the body. Now, a parallel group who is working in Japan recently produced these images. And what he is saying is, uh, from this picture, this, the picture on the right is uh, the back of a mice. Uh, the mice was induced with uh, basal cell carcinoma, some uh, kind of cancer. And he observed that when there is a cancer, the portion which was induced with the cancer emits a high, le high level of photons. So that means the metabolic activities, because in cancer cells there is a high metabolic activity, there are rapid cell divisions. So this was the reason for high emission. Okay, that means we can measure some kind of stress from this. This can be a tool to measure the stress factor. What next? So next was, this was the most important thing, was that we tried to detect what are the properties, what are the physical properties of the, this emission. We found out that the emission is in the visible region of the spectrum. That means starting from the blue till the red end of the spectrum. And also, to our surprise, it was that when there is a healthy living cell, it emits blue photons, while when the cells are diseased, they emit in the red region of the spectrum. That means, why not to use it for diagnosis? For example, let's say we go to a diagnosis like this. When we are normal, we are emitting blue photons. Let's say this is kept as a control. Next time when you go and we, you emit a red photon, that means something is wrong in your body. And this can now act as a pre-diagnosis tool rather than a diagnosis. Just with your doctor, you keep an image of your photon emission. And then later, you just keep on comparing every year to know whether your body is functioning well or not. So the next was to understand the origin of the light. So we did also a other set of experiments to which I will come. 
uh, basically, uh, when we talk about origin, the origin is basically from the oxidation, as I told you before, the oxidation and from the reduction of biomolecules. So uh, we use different props to understand actual mechanism, but it is very complicated, so I'm not showing it here. So the next experiment was to understand why these photons evolved in nature. With these experiments we are doing, uh, just it is in the pre preliminary stage, uh, we found out that when we kept different microorganisms in close contact, one was metabolically active, the other one was metabolically less active. That means one was having high density, dividing rapidly, and the other one just a uh, few cells dividing slowly. We monitored it by various techniques, and we find that when we bought in a close contact, closed the cover, didn't allow anything to pass, nor volatile compounds, no chemical transfer, and the surprise was that the, the population, one population, the small population, was influenced by the division of the high population. And in few hours, the rate of division in the other population was increased drastically as compared to the control. So, this can be an expla explanation why millions of reactions which are going inside our body are so well controlled. Maybe the signaling in our body for the reactions mechanism is controlled by photons somehow. Still a long way to go here. So after that, we started a communication with different research group around the world. And just now, seven groups across the world is working on this subject. And we are trying to better understand the mechanism, the role, and the sources of the photons. Thank you. <laughs>